this is the key to your success. Absolutely the key to your success. There is no ooh. Hi, Amy from Awali Life. Today we have a very important topic, and that is how to not eat foods that you don't like, how to politely not eat foods that you don't like. I personally believe that this one, this like life skill is right up there under wear deodorant. Like it's a very important life skill. I looked out on the internet and I looked out on YouTube to try and see if there were any videos like this out there. And I realized that there were an awful lot of videos that were telling people and explaining to people how they can learn to like different foods, but not this like vital skill of learning to avoid eating the foods that we don't like. So the ability to politely not eat foods that you don't like is a learned skill. And it has five steps and each one of them is important. When you come into that situation where you show up at your mother-in-law's house for dinner and she's made this horrific, I don't even know, beet and Bus Brussels sprouts ketchup combination. That sounds really gross, but whatever it is. It could be green beans, it could be peas, it could be lasagna, it could be whatever. It doesn't matter. You have to enter into like secret agent mode. There is some skill involved in this and it is a vital skill to learn and to practice. It is acting. It absolutely is acting. The other thing that I think that you need to know. As parents, it is important to teach this skill to your children. Now, under the age of eight, they are probably way too young. You should not be teaching them this skill at that point. You should be teaching them to take their little token bite of food and try some food out. But at some point between the ages of eight to 12, and definitely by the time they hit their teen years, they need to be taught this. This is an important life skill. Okay, five steps. <clears throat> the first and most important step is do not, under any circumstance, say something that would indicate that you do not like a specific food because then they're on to you. Then they're going to be watching you. <laughs> This is the key to your success. Absolutely the key to your success. There is no ooh. Yuck. That again. Ugh. No. Ugh. Oh, mom. <laughs> there is no and there is nothing, no indication whatsoever. The second thing that you have to do is you have to, while you're sitting down eating dinner, you have to find something to compliment about the food or this, you know, that kind of thing. Some compliment to give the person who prepared the food. And this has to be a sincere compliment. compliment. This cannot be like some fake whatever you have like this has to be real and it ha and so it could be you know let's say that you're eating something and you just really really love the enchiladas that you're having compliment the enchiladas uh, you know if there is absolutely no food on your plate that you could compliment then at least tell them something like i appreciate your efforts in making dinner anything that is related to this food. And if you, like, in the end, I suppose you could just like compliment them, but it would be, it is truly to like really tackle this skill, you need to figure out a way to compliment the chef. Compliment the chef. Don't wait till the last minute of dinner to do it because they will look at your plate if you do that. If you're sitting there and you're about ready to finish up dinner and you say, 
hey, thanks for the enchiladas or whatever else, they will look at your plate to see that you ate them. And then they will see the food that you didn't eat. And that will clue them in. Yeah, Our, the, the goal here is to not bring any attention to the fact that you're not bringing, you're not eating certain foods. Okay, I just had a hair, like I have this hair that is like, yeah, tickling my arm. Step three, when they are passing the food around and serving, now, okay, first of all, pre-step three, if you're in a buffet or in a situation where you don't have to take the food, well, obviously don't take the food. But if you're in a situation where they're passing the food around the table and somebody's gonna notice if you don't take the green beans or the cabbage something or other spinach mix, then what you have to do, this is step three, take a small portion. Take a small scoop. Step four, move the food around that you don't like while you eat. And yes, that means that the fork that you're eating the food that you do like has to touch the food that you don't like. But maybe you could like use the spoon to move the food around and use your fork then to eat. I don't know, you figure it out. There are different ways to do this, but it's not like a sudden move the food around and then you're done thing. It's like while you're eating, you have to occasionally touch the food with your silverware that you don't like and kind of move it around so that it's not in some like fancy little scoop on your plate. And so that it's like in other places. And yes, that probably means your peas are gonna touch your gravy. And I know that peas plus gravy equals poison, but it is important. You have to move it around on your plate. Don't leave it there completely untouched. Food that's been set on your plate and completely untouched and not like slightly mixed with the other leftover bits of your other food just says, I haven't been eaten. Somebody doesn't like me. And so people notice that. They're going to notice that you did not eat a specific food and it's gonna come up. The other part of number four and this is an advanced technique, but you should probably, if you're able, take a small token bite or two. It, they do not have to be big bites. Don't do it if you have to gag while you eat it. But it is, like if you can take a token bite or two, that like is like really, really good. Yeah, so. Take a token bite or two. That's also number four. So move the plate, you know, move the food around so that it's not in its original like little stack and take a token bite or two of the food as you move it around. Number five. When dinner is finished, you have to clear your own plate. So before somebody has a chance to get up and start clearing plates or whatever else, get up and do it yourself. You have to clear your own plate. And you go over to the trash and you very carefully scrape your plate into the trash because that's what people do or in the garbage disposal or wherever is most convenient. Try not to do it in a tree, the, you know, a potted plant or something, but scrape the offending food into the trash. And if necessary, take another little piece of trash out of the trash and kind of move it on top so that your food isn't on top so that the next person, when they come over to scrape their food, doesn't see this great big pile of peas. So kind of, you know, it is necessary sometimes to touch other people's trash to hide the food that you don't want to eat. And it's okay. Just wash your hands afterwards, it's all good. My bonus tip is if you have a napkin, when you're, like etiquette says that when you're finished eating, you should place your napkin on your plate. So the napkin, not like in its original form. So like if it's not been like mashed up in some way or whatever, it doesn't work as well. 
So make sure that you like maul your napkin a tiny bit or wipe your face with it or something so that it's not like this brand new looking napkin. But anyway, take your napkin and put it over the top of the food that you don't want to eat after you're finished eating so that when you're walking from the table to the trash can to scrape your food off, like it makes sense that you would be scraping your napkin off into the trash or, you know, that kind of thing. And then it also hides it, of course, as you're walking to the trash. And so nobody sees the fact that there's like this food that's left on your plate. Those are the five very basic things that you have to do in order to politely not eat food that you don't like. And I strongly recommend parents teach this to your children. It is more important than most of the other etiquette things around the dinner table because everybody is going to come into a situation where they have to eat something that they don't like or where they have to pretend to eat something that they don't like if they have had a chance to practice this skill. Anyway, that's the end. Yeah, jazz hands going on. That is the end. Make sure that you practice this, teach this to your children. So I hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time on A Lolly Life. <laughs>